Hello and welcome to Purposely Design. I want to start it off with prayer, Lord God. Um, I just thank you, Lord, for everything that you're doing in my life. I thank you, Lord God, for everything that you're doing in everyone else's lives that's listening to this message today. Lord God, I just pray that your will will be done in our lives, Lord God, and that we'll do things the way that you have us to do them, not the way that we want to do them, not according to our flesh, not according to, um, you know, our motives or anything to do with us, Lord God, but everything to do with you, not according to what others think or what they say, Lord God, but everything that you say and everything that you think today. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I've come against the enemy, Lord God, that would try to um, sabotage or try to delay everything that you have for us today. Lord God, I just give you honor. I give you praise and I give you glory for all that you've done and everything that you're going to do in the mighty name of Jesus. And I just give you I just give you praise today. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our lives. I thank you, Lord God. For provision, I thank you, Lord God, for everything that you've already done, even in the mighty name of Jesus. I give you honor, praise, and glory in Jesus' name. Thank God and amen. So, I want to start off today with um, exactly, you know, what God had given me to speak about. So, like, um, today. Well, yesterday, I was I was asking God, you know, like it was Women's Day, so I was like, Lord, you know, what do you want me to read about? I was I was questioning, like, do you want me to read about women? Do you want me to read about what you did on the cross? Like, what exactly did He want me to read about or speak on? And I heard the Holy Spirit say, "I am with you." You know, that is so encouraging, first of all, because just to know that God is with you, that means one thing, you can't be defeated because God is with you. As long as you take God with you on this journey, as long as you allow him to be in control of everything, of everything, you know what I mean? Um you going to win. You don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to worry about people. You don't have to worry about um, what you're going to do, how you're going to do it. All you have to do is trust God and lean on him and allow him to lead you, guide you, and direct you. And he'll do it. You know, he'll make a way. So, it was funny, you know, that I heard the Holy Spirit say this because, you know, I had other things that I, you know, God had given me and I was, you know, just taking account of those things. And, um, just that, that, uh, morning I was reading Haggai, you know, before I went to bed. And so, because, you know, I've been up late at night until sometimes five in the morning. So, you know, I had read this before going to bed and I woke up about maybe 10, 11 o'clock in the morning and I asked God while laying there, you know, like, what do you want me to speak on? And anyways, as I was reading Haggai, I kept seeing these words, literally, like, I am with you. I'm like, okay, so God, you're sending a message. <laughs> Um, I'm going to write these things down, but I didn't expect to actually be teaching on it this soon. You know what I'm saying? I didn't. But anyways, looks like here we are. And I didn't even have the message down, but because I heard the Lord say, I am with you. This is the title of the message today. So if you would turn to Haggai chapter 2 and 2 um, it begins with um, then spake Haggai 
the Lord's messenger in the Lord's message unto the people, saying, I am with you, saith the Lord. So first of all, we know this is Haggai, and it just specifies and lets us know that Haggai was the Lord's messenger. Hello. And in the Lord's message, so here's the message, and here the Lord is saying today, I am with you. <laughs> That's the message he sent to me. Okay, this that morning, you know, yesterday morning, I'm with you. Somebody needs to know that today, that God is with them. Somebody is going through something right now, and they need to know that God is with them. And so God was sending this message yesterday to let you know that he is with you. Oh, man, what can't you do when God is with you? <laughs> My question today is, what can't you do when God is with you? There's nothing that is impossible for you to do when you take God with you. So, and on to three, it says, who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? So as I was reading this, like I have went over this <laughs> again, like I have, first of all, this is a remake. So I had read this yesterday. And while I was reading this, while I was reading Haggai, I just really took in. Okay, so this, Lord, you speaking, this message, not just for y'all, y'all. This message is for me. And a lot of times when he gives me a message, it is for me as well. Okay, so I'm not just, you know, speaking to you. I'm speaking to myself. I'm encouraging myself with the word of God. Okay. God is encouraging me, you know what I mean, even in this process. It said, who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? So I thought about, I thought about myself and I thought about, you know, how things were, you know, I've, I've talked about God's house of prayer, which is the very beginning, the what, the work that God has started back in 2011, 2010, somewhere around there. And I started thinking about that, you know, who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? Who actually seen the beginning of this process? Hmm. And how do you see it now? And what do you think about it right now? <laughs> and I'm pretty sure there's a lot of thoughts. Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it? As nothing you see how he, this thing hurt like it hits okay it's hitting like bam is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing see when you see things when God is doing especially when God is doing something new see it's a process I'm gonna tell y'all I learned back then when I was just going by the instruction of the Lord and letting him lead me and guide me into the way that he wanted me to go, that this thing is not something that just happens overnight. Whatever God is doing, whatever God has done, it just didn't happen overnight, y'all. It is a process, and I'm telling you, it's a process. I remember, you know, at the beginning with, like I said, God's house of prayer, that we didn't have a building. Um, I know what God had told me. He had told me that your house shall be a house of prayer. And at the time he told me that, y'all, I, I had no clue it was even in the word of God. I had no clue that his house shall be a house of prayer was in the word of God. I had no clue. And then he he gave provision, y'all. He was leading me through the Holy Spirit. I had to learn how to feel through the Holy Ghost. I had to learn when God was instructing me to do something, to go to someplace. I kept going by this building. I was trying to understand, like, why am I being pulled to go into this building? I don't understand. Like, why do I feel like I need to be in here? And finally, I finally got out the car. I finally went on ahead and came on into the building. And when I finally did, God opened the door just like that. 
He said, do you know some, this, the man, the owner of this building was like, a, it was a coffee house. And he told me, he said, do you know of someone or do you have like a group or some people that you might want to come in and Bible study with? And I'm sitting over there like, what? A coffee house with Bible study? You know, y'all, I was, I was just like flabbergasted. I couldn't believe that this door had opened. And I remember when I first mentioned this to one of my cousins and he said, you know, your house, he's talking about you, your house shall be a house of prayer. Okay. But I knew it was more. See, God, when he does things, it may be on a small spectrum to others, but what he says and how he means it is what's most important. God opened up avenues. He opened up doors before we knew it. We were in a whole church, y'all. We were in a whole church like that. I didn't see that for myself, but God seen it for me. And um, how things happen and the way it happened. And you know what I'm saying? It just was all in the leading of the Holy Spirit. And you really have to be led. You have to do what God tells you to do. And you can't allow others to dictate things or to to try to get you to go their way because people will they will they'll come in with their comments their their uh thoughts their opinions and you have to make a decision as to what is most important is it important for you to follow people or will you follow God because God says in this word I am with you so you have to recognize that you have to acknowledge that God is with you okay So we're going to go on. And it says in four, yet now be strong. Okay, so no matter what it look like, God is saying, be strong. O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord, and be strong. O Joshua, Joshua, you be strong too. Son of uh, Josedek, the high priest. And be strong, all ye people of the land. So not only Josedek, um, the son of Josedek, Joshua, and um, Zerubbabel, but he said, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work. He tells you to work. He didn't say sit on your behind. He said work. For I am with you. He said it again. For I am with you. Said the Lord of hosts. Go ahead. Do what I tell you to do. Work. Do what I say to do. Because I'm with you. Be strong. Don't give up. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's so many times we get to these places in life where we're, we feel weak. Where we feel like, okay, And a lot of times weakness comes in when you don't know what's on the other side of the door. When you don't know what's about to happen next. You you become, you grow weary. But the word says not not to grow weary because in due season you shall reap if you faint not. So the word here is saying be strong. You know why? Because I am with you saith the Lord of hosts. God is with you. You don't have to worry about the things that you're worrying about right now. Because God is letting it be known, no matter what it looks like, I'm with you. So be strong. Know that I'm in control. I am with you. Five says, according to the word, that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt. So my spirit remaineth among you. Fear ye not. Okay, so when you came out of Egypt, see, is is the Holy Spirit is what brought you out of Egypt. And not only did it bring you out, but it stuck with you. He says, so my spirit remaineth among you. So guess what? Fear ye not. If God is with you, 
The word says if God is before us, who can be against us? Nobody. Okay? He's still with you. He's among you. Fear not. You may not be able to see him, but he's there. You may not even be able to feel him. But hallelujah, I thank you, Lord God, that you are there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. 6 says, For thus saith the Lord of hosts, Yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens. And I can just see the heavens shaking. And the earth, not only the heavens, but he said, I'm going to shake the earth. And the sea. And the dry land. So I'm going to shake heaven. I'm going to shake earth. The sea and the dry land. Seven says, and I will shake all nations. Did you see that? Just wait a minute. This is what I'm seeing. He said, it is a little while. So that means, hold on a minute. Like, don't worry about it. He said, I'm about to shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. And I will shake all nations and the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. So after... It's like after I get done lining these things up, after I get through shaking things into place, I'm going to fill up this house with my glory. Just wait. Wait just in just a little while. I know it seemed like nothing. Just a little while. It may not seem like it's anything. But just the Liashandaliente. God is saying, hold on just a little while longer. Don't wait. Don't worry. Be not discouraged. I am with you. I'm about to shake heaven. Hallelujah. I'm about to shake earth. I'm about to shake the seas. I'm about to shake the dry land. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm about to shake some things into place. And then I'm going to fill this house with my glory. Thank you, Lord. Saith the Lord of hosts. Now look at A. He said, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, saith the Lord. Everything belongs to me. Hey, he got all right to shake it into place. If he wants to shake it, let him shake it. And let them bring it all the way together in order. Everything belongs to him. You ain't got to worry about the gold because he owns it. You ain't got to the ashanda of the end the isa that of the. You ain't got to worry about the silver because he owns it, saith the Lord of hosts. Okay? Nine says, The glory of this later house shall be greater than of the former. So what you see right now is the beginning. See, the, the, back then, when I thought about this thing, I thought about back when, um, you know, when he was showing me something. You know, because sometimes he just give you a little glimpse. It's kind of like what I saw with Joseph. Like, okay, because I'm getting excited, y'all. I'm thinking about Joseph. And with Joseph, you know, he gave him a little taste, you know, at Potter's house. He he gave him just a little taste, a little glimpse as to what things was going to be like later once he set him up in the kingdom. But he at first he was just, you know, in this little place and he was second in command. Well, guess what? He was he was about to go into an even greater place. So I, I look at these things and I'm looking at how things was back in the house of God, the house that he had uh, opened the doors for. And I remember at the time when he opened them doors that he let me know that this was not permanent. It wasn't a permanent situation, y'all. I knew this already. And then he showed me how things was going to go down, okay? 
He showed me. And sometimes you got to be careful because if everybody isn't in line with the Holy Spirit, if everybody isn't uh, on board, then somebody can open up a door into the, to the enemy. See, sometimes you got to be careful because some people will open a door to the enemy and the enemy will come in and try to wreck house. Okay. And so he already gave me, he already showed it to me. He, he had, he had already instructed me on how things was about to go down, but also he was also letting others know I'm, I'm, it's not that you may not get it right now, but this right here, this person, I'm using them. And what they're telling you is true. Because I, I instructed people and let them know how things were going to go down. And it looked simple. A woman stepped on my foot. And I, and I said, you know, normally this would normally bother me. She stepped on my foot. You know what I'm saying? But I knew something was about, there was something about this. And I knew that they were about to step on my toes and step up on our toes and try to take over what God had opened the door for. You know what I'm saying? And it was on time. See, the good and the bad, they all work together for the glory of those who love the Lord. So you don't have to worry about it. God is in control, but also he was showing what to, he was showing me then what to look for he was showing me how he operates he was showing me things before they happen you see what i'm saying so it says the glory of this later house shall be greater than of the former so what you see now what you saw back then and i think about what i saw back then God said it's going to be greater, said the Lord of hosts. And in this place, will I give peace, said the Lord of hosts. So I'm going to even give you peace. The word says the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and it addeth no sorrow to it. So we know that the blessing of the Lord maketh rich. And if he tells us here that the latter house shall be greater than the former Then we and then he turns around and said, and in this place, will I give peace, said the Lord. That means God is going to not only bless. He's not even he's not just going to do greater than what he did before. But he also going to give you peace with it. (laughs) If you're not walking in peace, then, you know, somewhere you're doing something wrong you got to get lined up you got to do it the way god wants you to do it because with it is coming peace you ain't gonna have to worry about anything not to say that things won't get rough but i'm another hallelujah but peace is coming with it and god i get i give you praise and glory for the peace i thank you for the peace that's coming with it thank you lord he says, speak in 21. I, I skip down. You know, I was just reading nine. Now I'm going to skip down to 21. And it says, speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth. And I can just see shaking. Like I said, I seen the shaking. Um, I saw shaking not too long ago. I saw that God was lining things up into position not too long ago um this is like god is positioning things in their place god is putting things in order god is positioning and shaking things into its place amen 22 says and i will overthrow the throne of kingdoms and i will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heathen and I will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them and the horses and their rider shall come down 
everyone by the sword of his brother. Everything that has uh, exalted itself against the knowledge of God is about to be abased. It's about to be brought low. God is shaking. Jehovah Elohim, El Shaddai is, sh- is shaking some things in the heavens and the earth. Everything is lined up in submission with the will and the word of God. God is doing some shaking today. He's shaking everything into place. He's shaking everything in order. You don't have to worry. You don't have to fear. Just trust God. Like literally. He said, I'm with you. He said, my spirit ain't left you. I was with you in Egypt and I got you up out of there. And I'm still with you today. So you ain't got to be fearful. You don't have to worry. Just know that he is with you. 23 says, in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, will I take thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shetel, saith the Lord, and will make thee a signet, for I have chosen thee, saith the Lord of hosts. He said, I chose you. I chose you. And I'm going to make you a sign. Zechariah chapter 1. In Zechariah 1, it said, 1 and 3, it says, Therefore, say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Turn ye unto me, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. Be ye not as your fathers, unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Turn ye now from your evil ways and from your evil doings. But they did not hear nor hearken unto me, saith the Lord. Five says, Your fathers, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? Six says, but my words and my statutes, which I commanded my servants, the prophets, did they not take hold of your fathers? Hold on. He said it was his words and statutes that he commanded his prophets. His servants took a hold of your fathers, okay? And they returned and they returned and said, Like as the Lord of hosts thought to do unto us according to our ways and according to our doings, so hath he dealt with us. Isaiah fifty five and six says Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Hey, hold on. He said, if we forsake our ways and if the um, unrighteous man, his thoughts, he said the wicked, so if the wicked will forsake their ways and the unrighteous man, his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord. If you come back to God, he will have mercy upon you and to our God for he will pardon abundantly it says for he will abundantly pardon eight is so important just i mean all of it is important but listen to this he says for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways saith the lord god said i don't think like you 
<laughs> my ways ain't like yours. Okay? So maybe it don't make sense right now. But that's because I don't think like you. <laughs> I like uh, Dr. Alexis. She says, God is playing chess, not checkers. Okay? A lot of us simple-minded people, we don't play no chess. We play checkers. Okay? God is playing chess, not checkers. His, his his thoughts are way higher than that. His ways are way higher than ours. Even if you think you know how to play chess, you can't play it like he played. <laughs> okay? Anyways, 9. It says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours. There, that proves it. For as the heavens are higher than then the earth, so are my way. He gave you a comparison. You thinking earthly, carnal, unless you get in him, then you can think of spiritual, which is higher than the earth. You know, if you think of it in that, you know, in, in that type of way, like the earth is carnal. The things of the earth is carnal. But the things of heaven is spiritual, Okay. So you got carnal ways trying to think spiritual minded, you know, carnal, a uh, carnal mind trying to think spiritually. And he says, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. The word says, 10, for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither. It don't come back up. When the rain come down, it don't go back up. When the snow comes down, it don't return. Okay? But watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So it's doing exactly what God called for it to do. It comes down from the heavens and don't go back up. Instead, it waters the earth. And it makes, like springtime, it makes everything bud. The flowers open up. Okay? You don't even know, you know, what type of flower it is until it opens up sometimes. Um, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So, you know, not only is it, you know, the flowers, but also the fields, the, the corn and, you know, all the, the food that we eat from, from the ground, the fruit and, you know, the vegetation, you know, it gives bread, he said, to the eater. And then 11 says, and I almost went there. 11 says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth he said it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which i please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto i sent it see god's word it don't go back void it does not go back void it does exactly what it was sent out to do it don't return back it ain't like, you know, it's just like that snow. It's just like the rain. When he, when he sent, when he created, you know, that rain and that snow, he, he created it for seasons. And, and like, I can see, I can hear transitions. You know what I'm saying? Because you're, you're uh, in, in one part of, of the season, you get more rain. And another part of the season, you know, you get more snow. And it just depends on what's going on in the earth, in the ground. You know what I'm saying? What's going on? What what time of the year it is? What depends on that environment. Okay? He says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. Everything that God speaks. I know I, I have read, you know, if you believe. Whatever you believe, whatever you believe, you will receive it. 
God said, whatever comes out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void. Look, whatever he said, whatever he says, it's going to do exactly what he sent it out to do. If he says, I'm with you, know that he really is with you. There's no question. God is there. You may not, like I said, you may not see it, but he's there. It don't make, it don't make it no difference. He's still there. You know what I'm saying? And then 11, it says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. So whatever I please is going to do. <laughs> it ain't coming back void. Whatever I say, it does what I tell it to do. That word, when he said, let there be light, guess what happened? The light came. Mm -hmm. Whatsoever he tells his word to do, it does it. It does it. You know, um, and he says, it shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please. Whatever I please is going to do. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. You got to know it's going to prosper. Whatever God says, whatever he says about you, whatever he told you he was going to do, guess what? It's going to happen. It's going to prosper. Is going to go the way he had planned for you, for it to go, okay? Especially when you in the wheel, when you're lined up, when the, he gets done shaking things into place, when you are positioned, hallelujah, when you are positioned in the place that you're supposed to be at. It don't have no other choice but to grow for, go forth and bud. It has no other choice but to submit to God's will because it don't go back void. It does exactly what he pleased, and it prospers in the thing whereto he sent it. 12 says, for ye shall go out with joy. Listen, you're going to go out with joy. And then listen to this, and be led forth with peace. There's peace again. You're going to go out celebrating, and you're going to have peace with this. Don't worry. You may not be at peace right now because you're in the process. Hello? When you're in the process, sometimes it ain't so peaceful. But it's steering you. It's directing you. It's leading you into the place where you're supposed to be. Everything happens for a reason. Everything is steering you to him for him to do his divine work in you. <laughs> however, he see it um, forth as far as however he see it going. That's how it's going to go. Period. It's his plan. He, he knows the plans he has for you. And he's going to do exactly what he tells you is he's going to do. He said the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing. Can you imagine the mountains and the hills starting to sing? It says, and the, the trees of the, tr of the field shall clap their hands. The trees is even going to be clapping their hands. Look, there's a celebration going on. God is shaking. He said, not only the heavens, the earth, the seas, he's lining things up. And when things get lined up, guess what? Everything's going to break forth into praise. Everything's going to break forth into praise. Everything is going to break forth into praise. I hear it just like that. Everything's going to break forth into praise. Look, you ain't got to worry about it. Everything is lining up for you. God is with you. And if God be for you, who can be against you? It don't matter what people think. It don't matter what people say. God has the last say. God has the last say. Everything is going to break forth into praise. Look. The hills, the mountains, 
the trees. 13 says, instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Here's that sign again. Here's that sign again. He said, an everlasting sign. That shall not be cut off. He said, and it shall be to the Lord for a name. For an everlasting sign. That shall not be cut off. God is establishing his word. He's letting you know it doesn't return back void. If God said it. You can bank on it. It's coming to pass. I heard the Spirit say, I am changing the status quo. I am changing people's perspectives of you. What they thought about you, he's changing that. You ain't got to worry about that. Let God fight that for you. As you become who you are, because you already are, it's just that you're becoming. I said, you already are. Because see, if God says it, then that's who you are. You're just becoming. Don't worry. You're going to get to where you're supposed to be. Because God is changing the status quo. That's not one of my terms. I don't say that. (laughs) But God gave it to me. He said, I'm changing people's perspectives of you. So let's read the definition of status quo. Status quo says um, in the Webster's Dictionary, it, it refers to status quo as the current situation, the way things are now. He said he's changing that. That means it's going in a different direction. However, Things are right now, the current situation, whatever, wherever you are right now, God is changing. You may not see it, but he's with you and he's changing your situation. Thank you, Lord. I heard that. He's changing your situation. He's changing the way things are now, the way people see you right now. The way things are going in your life right now. He's changing it. All you got to do. All you got to do is trust and believe that he is changing it. So not only is God positioning you. But he also is repositioning some people. He's positioning. But he's also repositioning. So. It's like, um, I heard last year, I heard God say that he was shifting things. I knew God was doing a shift. This year, he told me that the shift was done, but now came, comes the positioning. And he let me know also, which is another fact, is that um for me to guard my heart because in this positioning God starts revealing during positioning God starts revealing he shows you some things but it's also to help you to get to where you're supposed to be okay so anywho Jeremiah 29 and 11 says for I know the thoughts that I think towards you saith the Lord Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. God knows exactly his plans for your life. He said thoughts of peace. Once again, we hear peace. When we're in God's will, guess what? We we receive peace when we're doing doing things the way that God, once we're totally lined up in God's will, once we're completely in submission, Once we yield our hearts unto the Lord, 
and our souls unto the Lord. Once we just say, you know, Lord God, let, not my will, but your, your will be done. Your will be done in my life. And you really mean it and you really submit your life. Your, you submit everything unto the Lord. You don't worry about your current situation. You don't worry about how things are going to work out. You don't worry about how to change, changing stuff. You let God do it. And guess what? When he gets done, you won't have peace. <laughs> he said peace and not of evil thoughts of peace. He got peace. He got thoughts of peace towards you, not evil. To give you an expected end. It's going to go exactly how he planned it. It's going to go exactly because he planned it already. He said, I knew you before the foundation of the of the world. He, he knew you before everything took place. He already knew. Before you entered into your mother's womb, I knew you. I knew you already. I already had plans for you. I already had you in my mind before I even positioned you, before I even sent you on this assignment here. I had already planned. I already knew uh, my child, Angela. I know exactly where I'm. I'm I know exactly who I'm going to give, give her to. She's going to have to be of this person and this person descent in order for her to be the type of woman that I call for her to be. In order for greatness to come out of her, I have to position everything in the way that it's supposed to go. It has to go this way. It may seem like she got off right here, but guess what? This is going to happen. All this is going to lead her back because I already know the decisions that she's going to make here. So I'm going to have to do this in order for things to balance. You know, that's just God. He steers you in his own way. He said to give you an expected end. 12 says... Then shall ye call upon me. So then you can call upon him. And he said, and ye shall go and pray unto me. And I will hearken to you. Then you can call upon him. And go and pray. And I'm going to listen. <laughs> 13 says, and ye shall seek me and find me. Guess what? I'm going to be available to you. Which we already know he's available because he said, I'm with you. When ye shall search for me with all your heart. Some, that surrenderance. I'm telling you. Something about yielding your heart unto the Lord. Something about searching for God with everything. When you just yield everything. My heart, my mind, my soul. I'm just, I just submit everything unto you, Lord. I submit everything unto your will, Lord God, for my life. Everything, God. Oh, Lord, I thank you, Lord. I submit you, Shandarabe. I submit all unto you, O God. John 5 and 37 says, And the Father himself, which have sent me, hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. This is John 5 and 37. It said, And the Father himself, which have sent me, hath borne witness of me. He said, ye sh you, you haven't even heard his voice at any time. You ain't even seen his shape. This is Jesus talking, y'all. 38 says, And ye have not his word abiding in you. For whom he has sent him, ye believe not. See, people... Like, they want to choose. And if you don't meet X, Y, Z, they don't believe you. They don't even believe that God chose you. But God's saying, I'm with you. You're mine. I chose you. 39 says, search the scriptures. For in them ye think. Ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify me. What you're reading? Talking about me. Look, the only way you will receive 
eternal life is through me, is what Jesus is saying. If you believe in Jesus Christ, not about what people said about him, but about what the word says. 40 says, and ye will not come to me that she might have life. 41 says, I receive not honor from men. Look, you got to stop trying to get honor from people. People, no matter what you do, you could be performing all the miracles in the world. And you're not going to receive the honor from people. It says 42, but I know you. That ye have not the love of God in you. You think you have the love of God in you. But what you have ain't love. Okay? Is what I'm seeing in this scripture. But I know you. So God, he, look, he can see you. He knows the spirit that you hold. He said, I don't look at the outer man. I look in the heart. I can see in the inner parts. That's who I'm looking at. You can put all the diamonds on. You can put all, all the gold on. You can dress in shiny arrangements. You can um, put on uh, long skirts. You can go without thinking of polish. God still know your heart, okay? You can try to cover up all day. You can put on a big old, a long, a nice suit, okay, and a tie. However... God is not looking at all that. He knows you. He knows what's in you. And he knows if you got love in you. He knows if you you got the love of God in you. He knows if you know him. 43 says, I am come in my father's name. And ye receive me not. So. There's people that's been chosen. They come in as a representative of God. And he says that he received me not. That's what Jesus just said. He said, I'm come in my father's name. And you receive me not. So that's what he, that's what they, they didn't receive him. So nine says out of ten, they're probably not going to be receptive of you. If you, you know, are his servant, if he has chosen you, you may have some issues with people getting on board and acknowledging who you are in him. It says, if another shall come in his own name, him he will receive. So you dismiss God's representatives, but submit to the people who have gone outside of God's will and began representing themselves. Hmm. So because they fit the bill, because they fit X, Y, Z, because they're doing and looking the par, you know what I'm saying? The way that you think that they are, because you can't see the inward parts, but you see the outside and it seems like it's glowed. It's, it's, it seems like they're lining up, right? You receive them. 44, it says, how can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? So you can, be, you can believe and receive people that you honor and other people honor. Everybody just, all I can see is everybody just following one another. Everybody just, you know, deciding who is the one that's more honorable. Who is the one that meets exactly what they assume holy looks like. And it says, and seek not the honor that cometh from the from God only. I want to say from the Father only. So the ones that come from God only. Hey, you called Bezalel. That's what the word says, you know, that they call Jesus Christ. Called him Bezalel. You know what I'm saying? They call him Satan. 
So anyways, you're so busy glorifying one another that you can't even recognize the one that comes from the Father only. 45, do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. So we know that Satan is the accuser of the brother. But Jesus saying, not me. I ain't accusing you. And then he said, even Moses, in whom you trust. Mm. I know um, Moses got tired of people. <laughs> you know, as he, you know, once he led him, the start leading him through the wilderness, and these people grumbled and they complained and they came up with all this stuff, and he kept coming to the Lord about these people. Lord, have mercy. And so Jesus said, I ain't going to throw you under the bus. I ain't going to talk about you. I ain't going to do that. So 46 says, For had ye believed Moses, ye would have, you, you would have believed me. Ye would have believed me. For he wrote of me. So who Moses was talking about was me. So if you believe Moses, what you saying? You saying you believe Moses? Well, then you should believe in me then. 47, but if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? You, If you don't believe what he said about me, how are you going to believe what I'm talking about then? You're not. Second Chronicles 20 and 5 says, and Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. And said, O Lord, God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven? And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the of the heathen? And is is not is and it sorry, and in thine hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? Look, God, you are all powerful. You got all the might. Everything, you know, is in your hands. You know, you rules over kingdoms, over the heathen. You are um, Lord God of my fathers. And it says, seven, art not thou our God who did drive us out of the inhabitations of this land before thy people Israel and give us it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever. Ain't you the God who drove us out of the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel and gave it to the seed of Abraham, your friend forever? Ain't you the God? I know I'm talking to the right God. Eight, and they dwelt therein and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name. Saying, nine, if when evil cometh upon us as the sword judgment or pestilence or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence. For thy name is in this house and cry unto thee in our afflictions. Then thou will hear and help. 10 says, and now behold the children of Ammon. And Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. 11. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession. Which thou hast given us to inherit. O God, 12. O our God, thou will, I mean, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no, have no might against this great company 
that cometh against us, neither know we what to do. We don't even know what to do with these people. Won't you, Lord, take care of these people. We don't have might against these folks. And we don't know what to do. But our eyes, look at that. Change your vision. Turn, turn from yourself. Stop trying to figure it out. He said, but our eyes are upon thee. My eyes is on you, Lord. 13. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. 14 says, Then upon Jezel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Beniah, the son of Jeel, the son of Mattiah, 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 a Levite of the son of Asa, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. I'm sorry, Matana, a Levite of the sons of Asa, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. 15 says, And he said, Hearken ye, all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou king of Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Look, don't worry about it. Because he said, Be not dis-, he said, nor dismayed. So don't be afraid. Don't worry. Be not afraid. Don't fear. Nor dismay. Don't worry. By reason of this great multitude. Don't look at how many people it is. And get scared. Don't look at this situation. How great it may seem. And start worrying. For the battle is not yours. But God. It belongs to the Lord. Don't worry about it. God's going to take care of it for you. 16 says, Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. 17 says, Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Oh, you won't. I'm going to tell you where to find them at. Tomorrow, he said, go down against them. Oh, they're going to come up by the cliff of Ziz. And you're going to find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeru. 17 says, and ye shall, it says, ye shall not need to fight in this battle. You ain't got to worry about fight. He said, set yourselves. Position yourself. Stand ye still. Be still. Don't move. Position yourself and stand still. And the word says, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. He said, I'm with you. (laughs) You're going to see my salvation. All you got to do is stand still and let me fight this battle for you. Don't worry. Don't be dismayed. Don't be fearful. Just stand still. Get in position. Where he puts you, wherever he placed you, stand where you're supposed to be at. Don't get out of line. Don't move. Stand right where you are. Right where you're supposed to be. And God said, I'm going to fight this battle for you. You're going to see my salvation. You're going to see the salvation of the Lord with you. You're going to see that I am with you, just like I said. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Don't you fear. Don't you be worrying. Tomorrow, go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. God already said, I am with you. Don't worry. Don't be dismayed. Do what I tell you to do. 
because I'm with you. You gonna win. Be strong. Don't fear. I'ma fight this battle for you. All you gotta do is believe. Allow me to do it. Stand still. Be be in your place. Set in the position that I sent you to. Don't go. Don't move. Stand still. Watch me work. <laughs> Watch me work. I'm with you. All you got to do is believe. Don't fear. This battle belongs to me. It's not yours. So I'm going to end it right here. I'm just thanking God for this word. I thank him that he let me know. I mean, I'm taking this personal, y'all. I really do. I take everything, all this personal because it not only applies to me it applies to you but it also applies to me and I know what God is doing in my life and I pray that you see God fighting for you and see that he is with you fighting for you know that he is in control he's in control you ain't got to worry about it stop worrying so much stop being so fearful let God fight for you. You're going to see. He is He is going to win this battle. And he's going to bring you peace about it. He's going to bring you through this. Like wherever you are right now, he's going to bring you through it. Whatever you're been, you've been dealing with, don't worry. God is going to bring you through it. He's there. He's fighting for you. Don't be fearful. Don't be worrying about it. How? What am I do? How I'm gonna make it? You know what? What's next? You may not be able to see on the other side, but if God is with you, who can be against you? And if He's fighting for you, you ain't gotta worry. If He says, "I got this," He got this. The battle don't belong to you; it belongs to Him. This is He said, "My word don't go back void." It's going to do exactly what I sent it out to do. So I'm praying and hoping that this word right here encourages you. It encouraged me. I got encouraged from this whole thing. Like I'm just so excited because I know God is rebuilding in my life. He's rebuilding some things, and sometimes He got to expose the enemy he got to expose some things he got to show me okay angie look i let me in control let me dictate how things is going to go i already got the plan already written i already know who you are you come into the really really coming into the realization as to who you are um and you're about to see what i'm about to do for you all you got to do is stand still, be in position, do what I tell you to do, and watch me work. <laughs> be still, be in the position that I've set you to. He already shifted things. He said, I'm, a sh I'm, sh I'm shaking some things into place. I'm positioning you. Uh, no, a little bit more to the left. Uh, now I got to shake heaven and earth again. Uh, 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 wait a minute, let me go to the right. Okay, right there. This is exactly where I want you to be. Now, don't you move. Stand still. Watch me work. Watch me work. God is doing this. He's doing something new in you. All you got to do is sit back and watch him work. Be sensitive to the spirit. Allow him to do this. Allow him to work through you. He's already in you. He's already with you. He's already fighting for you. All you got to do is believe. All you got to do is trust him. All you got to do is yield everything unto him. Everything, all your worries, your heart, your spirit, your soul, everything that you control, okay? Everything, your fears, everything. Yield it all to God. Let him work. Watch him work. He's in control. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our lives, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing in my life. I thank you, Lord God, how great you are, how great thou art. 
Lord God, I thank you that you let it be known that you are with us. You are with us. Thank you, God, that you go even before us. Thank you, Lord God, just how great you are, how strong you are, and how you proving yourself. You are proving yourself even now, but you've already proven yourself time and time again. All we have to do is get into submission and trust you and get into our place. Stand in that place that you placed us at. Be obedient to your will, Lord God, and let and just sit back and watch you work. And God, I give you, I give you honor, I give you praise, and I give you glory for what you're doing. I thank you, Lord God, because I can see you working in my life. I thank you, Lord God, because I know you're working in those that's listening to life as well, Lord God. I thank you for your provision, Lord God. Thank you for going before us, Lord God. Thank you for showing yourself strong in us and through us. Oh God, I thank you, Lord, that we don't have to fight every battle. Everything is not our battle, but God is yours. It belongs to you, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to take our hands off of it and allow you to do what you're going to do. In and through us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Help us to take our hands off of it. Release it unto you. Everything, Lord. The ministry that you have, Lord God. For us, Lord God. We just release our hands, Lord God. And help allow you to go forth. And how you want to do it. Your way, Lord God. Your will for our lives, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. And God, I give you the praise and the honor and glory for what you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name. Thank God and amen. I pray that this will help you and encourage you. And until next time, God bless you.